How's it going guys? It's Mr Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm going to give this a review, the Hummer H2. There's a couple of reasons I chose this tonight. I uh, I wanted to do a scout review to be honest because I kind of wrote most of them off at the start because of the roof rack glitch and they just weren't any good. I was like, I just didn't bother with them, I didn't really want to do a review of them because they were so painfully slow. Obviously since that I've tried them again. They're definitely, they're still mainly in advantages in just taking trucks as you'll see, but yeah, they are. They have their moments. They are a bit of fun. You can, if you need to get to a bit awkward places and that. It's uh, yeah, they they're viable now. And the reason I wanted to do this one first was one, I wanted a bit of a scout review test run because I've not I've chose slightly different scenarios and so on. And also, I was like the harshest on this one really when the uh, roof rack glitch was happening. Well, it still is happening, but when I had the roof rack on. Uh, because I, ju I just had like a higher bar set for this, like I kind of didn't expect a TUZ166 to blow me away, it's like a little old old school vehicle. This is a Hummer, you expect it to be a bit of a monster, but and it wasn't, and it was just, yeah, disappointing. But now it is definitely a lot better, it's, uh, yeah, I'll get stuck into the review and we'll uh, check it out, but it's definitely, yeah, I've had a pretty good laugh with it to be honest. It's got its moments. So we'll start with the engine. Uh, obviously, top engine, 6.2 litre turbo military engine thing. As for the gearbox, I'm personally going for free weight. I tried both of them out. The Snow Runner definitely has its advantages. Obviously, you got a high low, but because these don't do well off road, particularly heavy off road, I think I can just get more out of the uh, high range skirting around the edges of all like the rougher bits. Uh, the raised suspension it doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but obviously. It lets you have bigger tyres. I wanted to talk about these tyres because there, there is a bit of a unique situation. These tyres are what come stock on it and they're bloody good basically. I appreciate it. A couple of people told me like in the comments, you got to try them. They're, they're obviously a bit more special than your usual stock tyre. And uh, yeah, they're right. I'm glad they told me they are. I've tested them out. Um, yeah, they're very good to be honest. The, the couple of reasons I'm gonna do chained on this review is because one it helps it's like a truck review not a, or a scout review not a tire review and then I now want to see if they're all got the same shoes what does the truck do but as well this is the big one is it's only a 36 inch if I could get him in 39s I probably would just say sod it it's a unique tire it's for this truck and I'd put it on but just having that bigger tire does make a difference and I can show you that in a minute like you look at that darker patch of ground underneath that's just dropping like you're basically getting like another lift kit oh not much but it can make that difference I did notice as well while I'm here it's a nice little touch the skid plate has got H2 written on it probably not the most efficient thing to write on, <laughs> on a skid plate but I like the attention to detail it's pretty cool but yeah to me it's just I'm gonna stick with these but it was close and I'll show you a couple of little tests I did but and I know I won't normally do this in the other scouts it's only because these have got those very unique tires to begin with like obviously Hummer sort of said yeah put something decent on stock like I don't want people finding it and it's terrible and then I put a roof rack on it and it was terrible anyway but yeah that, that's the situation I'm not at all knocking those tires they're fun and I'll show you later I there's situations I'd rather go out in them but for the sakes of this test at least then They've all got the same shoes on, and it's now down to what the uh, what the uh, what the truck can do really, how the scout can fill in for for that. I've uh, I've got the advanced scout winch. It's definitely worth getting really because the pulling power and the reach on it is a beast. I'm not going to bother with spare tires or anything like that. You can have the spare tires. You can get the roof. Obviously, definitely don't get the roof rack, but the spare tire in the back probably would be fine. But I'll just nah, I'll I'll skip it. I don't really bother that much anyway, especially since the roof rack thing. The uh, Diff I think was engageable. The snorkel, you pretty much up to the roof, which was nice. As for the light bars, I was on an hour in which to get. In the end, I'm gonna uh, just stick with that one. Like, there's a couple. Of, I don't really like the horns on scouts. As for the bumpers, I personally like that one because it's got like the sort of bars around the uh, rear lights. Oh, sorry, I ended up going yeah for that uh, roof rack in the end. Like, no beacons on it. Just looks a bit cleaner. As for the front bumpers. Well, you'll see the stock one is like so. The next one up is definitely a bit worse. Not bad, but it is worse. That one is basically the stock bumper, but 
with all the bars and everything on the top when I actually go back down they're the same bumper so yeah I personally I'm obviously going to go for the third one I normally go for the third one anyway before I even thought about that I just like the bar I, would, I don't think it makes a lot of difference if you're going to hit something there's only two alloys I'm going to go for them ones but um, yeah as for all the normal colours obviously there is the normal colours the paint schemes is this one which I quite like this one, I like that one as well. The only reason I didn't pick it is because the cat CT680 and stuff like that looks good in that colour. And I don't want to make them all yellow. I like that one in the end. This one, I don't dislike it at all. It reminds me of the uh, original like GT40, Ford GT40, like uh, golf racing colours. So I do quite like it, but uh, that as well is a nicer shader of green. Nicer shader? Nicer shade of green. Yeah, I'll still eyeball in that. <laughs> GT Golf Colours, but yeah, I went for this one in the end. So anyway, we're going to have a look outside. Now, for the different tests, I'm going to go up this wiggly mountain road, because again, it's like, obviously this ain't going to do cargo runs or anything like that. You're going to be doing, like, awkward little roads. The other thing I'm going to do is fly down this road, attempt to make that corner, but we'll see. But essentially, you can cover quite a lot of distances on paved and light off-roading. So I think it's quite a good test of like where you're actually going to use this, if you know what I mean, flying across maps. As for looks, well, I definitely like the look of it. I do wish it was the Hummer H1, if I'm honest. This one just looks a bit chunkier sort of thing, and it like looks a little bit less off-road capable. More, yeah, civilian just driving around town vehicle. Um, inside, I like the white dials. I, like, I had a Ford Escort back in the day, and it was uh, had white dials. <laughs> it reminds me of that. Uh, yeah, yeah, to be honest, I like the interior. I've spent a lot of time in this interior because of the uh, glitching flying around the map, which I'll have a little Hummer update at the end because there's been a bit of action. Um, out the views outside, the mirrors are like, yeah, so-so. The views outside, I can't really see my own wheels. Because it's, it's a scout horn's fine. I'll get over it. But it's not horrible at all. <laughs> if that was on, like, the Colob or whatever, yeah. Uh, nice, quick through the rev range. Which I like. It's uh, yeah, it's good enough. So we'll uh, we'll set off. Helps if you put it in gear, of course. This is one reason, by the way, I like chained. It stops the drift, but it wasn't so much that it jumps over, and that's what I'll show you. You know those special stock tires. If you get in a drift with them on tarmac, they grip enough to roll you. So, as fun and good as they are, they can be a little too good <laughs> sometimes. And because this slightly got more power to the back end, I'll show you that later, but it's a little bit drift happy, which I like. That's one thing I do like about it, but it's not necessarily the safest, most efficient way to travel. Through here, or up to now, like, it's been fine. It's sort of, it's not as good as advanced special gearbox for just sitting in auto. Now you can already see other tyre tracks through here. I came through here about three times in the chain, three times in the mud, three times in those unique um, stock tyres, the Hummer branded tyres. There's... Like... It's really hard to tell because each time it's a different speed through there and there's different bits and blah blah blah, but I'll happily say the mud tyres might have the speed edge, but when I say the speed edge you're talking like six kilometers instead of five maybe but you know you're not like it's staying in the same gear and all the rest of it it's such a little difference but I will like some people have said they reckon the muds are slightly faster through bits like that and I do agree um yeah but I tried them all this was certainly fine the other uh, little stock tires did bloody well so, again someone told me they're pretty good at ripping through mud and they are they're like if you're on a map where there's not too much hills and like ground clearance, I'd like they're not bad. They're good, especially for like what you get stock. So I'm at this uh, mountain section now. Like basically, I'll just say while I'm going up here, obviously you're just going to see how well it uh, turns corners, climbs up the hill, builds the revs, what it's like in low. I, I'll be honest though, I will say in low range, just basic low. It's not quite got enough revs. It revs to about 2,000 in low, and it needs two and a half, three thousand really. But obviously, there's like a rev cap limit thing when you put it in gears. So, uh, for me personally, I do find myself in auto a lot because it just adds a bit more revs. So, and it sort of—I know I understand you lose the diffs, 
but part of this test as well these tests is like trucks that have got the diffs on that's their bonus trucks that haven't got the diffs on how do they get by without them sort of thing what's the differences so yeah obviously I'm I'm not necessarily recommending you go everywhere in auto but uh, one of the reasons I wanted to do the Hummer tonight as well is I basically I want to review the Lodestar the the uh, international Lodestar 1700 and the loaf I mean the loaf's gonna have its own it might be like a two-part review because that thing's so bloody good but yeah I didn't really want the first run to be with one of them if that makes sense like I've been testing out things tonight and I'm gonna obviously I'm doing a review on the Hummer I'm pretty happy with the tests I've done but there's just I don't know I just wanted like a dry run to kind of fine-tune it and then I'll do a Lodestar review soon because that is a bloody good truck for me like the Loaf's my favorite the Lodestar is an easy second the Tatrin's off-road capability wise it's third but I don't drive it a lot because it's so slow that unless I'm nearby I can go in something else that'll get there quicker than the Tatrin and still be fine off-road so unless I'm close by like I wouldn't bother taking the Tatrin to Rift because it'll take me bloody 20 minutes just to drive there um, yeah, but off-road wise, that's my third favourite, I suppose, like if I, I, I was going to play around with it. And fourth to tenth or whatever, you're kind of talking like this Hummer. See, little bits like this, the Hummer is quite wide for a Scout. And it did make it through there without killing that tree, which is good because that's a potential winch point. So you drive along here, it's like on top gear with the old death road, like, funnily enough... I think I was talking to my cat because he was looking out the window and I it was my fault, I'm not blaming it on him, like I was just not paying attention and that was it. <laughs> That's how easy it is in real life. Don't talk to your cat when you're driving. Um, obviously it was kind of interesting though, but I think this is the same hill basically, I just climbed up a minute ago. And like I say, I, I might fine tune these tests a little bit, but this is the general like because this is basically my first scout review forget the tattering because like I say that's just a different entity they just had to put it in scout because it doesn't tow trailers and all that um, but yeah like this video tonight is setting a pretty good benchmark like I already know I've drove a lot of the scouts since the roof racks and all sorts I certainly know what the loaf can and can't do so I've definitely already got a pretty good feeling of where this sits among the scouts um, but yeah, as it's first up on like these specific tests and blah 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 for the review, this is basically setting the benchmark and then I can now see when I do the next reviews, like, you know, we can all see really. That's why I like to keep the test similar because, as I said before, it's all well and good knowing oh, a truck can go through that bit, but it's like, what does that mean? Can every truck go through there or is that special or what? So yeah, it's nice to know what they can all do, but it's especially nice to know what they can all do relative to each other which is obviously going to help make a decision but yeah it got up here like I say I still think it's punchier in auto but uh, yeah either way it got up here it would have got here just fine in uh, low range with the diffs on just a little bit slower as I was driving along here I'm on my way by the way I just wanted to mention as well this next part I'm going to do see it goes along alright in here but it drops out of like top gear auto easier um for this like snow runner rally I want to do, I was going to say, is uh, what do you guys think to this, it'll be coming up in a sec, like the first stage of the rally, because obviously I want it to be a quick stage, so I'm in that trailer park, I'm going to fly through the town, down that corner, which you can get a bit of a drift going like in the faster stuff, through there, and I'm going to attempt to go around this corner. In this video today, this is going to be a scout test, because again, I'm just, how quick can you just fly across the map? Um, but yeah, I'm just throwing it out there, like what do you think to this as course number one for the uh, Snowrunner Rally, or do you want something a bit more off-road? But I could also do a separate mini-series of like mud bogging, so I don't want the rallies to be like really slow, if you know what I mean. I want to see how the faster stuff... I will do obviously more dirt roads and all sorts, this is just like a bit of a warm-up, uh, see how they handle flat out on paved roads really. This corner, I fly down this quite a lot and it's like... Yeah, this was quite nice down here, to be honest. I do think if it had the stock tyres, I'd prefer them now. Not, like, for fun, not because these are worse. It's just, I think it'd drift a bit nicer in those branded stock tyres. You see there, though, when you're driving this truck, when you've got the accelerator on, 
the back end lights to step out, which I like, and it's it's comfortable in this, I have to say, it's not crazy. When you let off though, and you try and turn, there is understeer, and that's what got me there with that light. They're still anti-terrorist barricades. Some guy was telling me since the update. By the way, this was a per I couldn't stage that, but that was perfect, because out of a lot of the scouts, not everything does it, some trucks do it, some don't as well. If you just skim a barrier, the wheels are a bit sticky and they like they'll grip on, do that damage and probably flip you. That does happen quite a lot in the Hummer. I knew before I even touched that barrier, like, oh here we go. But it's nice for the test because I didn't make it down to that corner and in real life, like that happened if you know what I mean. If I cock it up badly I'll have another go, but if it feels like a pretty real life run, then yeah, it almost made it, but just watch out. If you clip the tire on a barrier, it might flip you. As for the snow test, like this is where I'll, I'll honestly, I'm already tapping out. I'm like, I'll just go and get a truck. But I want to show you the barrier test and stuff because there is a few things I tried. Like I said, I'm not going to do this with every scout. That's why this video is a bit longer. It could have been more like 35 minutes. Um, I've got over here. I've got the chain tires on, and they've just got enough bite to get over there. I do find though, just bear in mind, the right wheel goes into like a bit of a dip there, just because I'm going to show you another tyre. Um, these chains, they do, and it's the same really with all the scouts, they don't bite on in the same way like, I think trucks are just heavy enough that they push down on the chain. However, this is MUDS, and I can get the first tyre over, but then it shoves me around to an awkward angle, the front tyre can't won't bite up the barrier and the rear tyres aren't biting enough on the road. However, I come to this rock and again, even though I don't think the chain are as good on scout as they are on trucks, this could just isn't having it until I jiggled the tyre and kind of levered myself over that rock, which is kind of propping me up. But the tyres slid straight off. Like, yeah, the, the chain are better for that, but I'm not knocking these. You'll just see why I'm, uh, I'm doing this. And then obviously when I got back to here, I could get the front over, but now, when I, you see when the weight tipped forward, they didn't bite into the road and pull my back end over as easily. This is now the stop tyres, I mean, this is very good for the start, like, they, they're some punchy little beasts. However, because they're smaller, it's only that, not much difference, but that rock... I think all the others would have just, if, like I say, if they had these in 39 inch, I probably would have done this review in them because I really like them. And I'd definitely recommend if you've got the Hummer and you've just stuck something other than the stock ties on, go back and try them. That's what people told me. And like I said, I appreciate the info. It, I'm glad I did. Uh, yeah, it. I went up there for a start, but it was basically the back tyres digging in the mud shoved me up and, as, and then my tyres just slid around. This, that few inches. <laughs> it makes everyone's the size doesn't matter it does like that was just low enough to where the bumper I'm in the exact same place but the bumpers clipping and I do move over a bit and yeah now but that's half the like defeated the purpose of if you have to go somewhere else they're not getting over where you wanted to but you see how when the nose got over they bit onto the road and that just pulled my back end enough to where then I got over and the muds were the only ones that I couldn't get over um, it was just like a little drift around. Funnily enough, that is pretty typical when you hit a barrier. Look, these are the stock tyres. I was like, oh yes, I like these. I like these for drifting a lot. They're still controllable enough. However, this, <laughs> that was genuinely not on purpose. I was just drifting and having fun. They, they grip so well that you can flip. Now I'm back with the chain tyres. These are definitely, like you can see, the back end doesn't go as much. It almost caught me out because I was trying to catch a big drift and I didn't really have one. They're definitely, like, safer, but I would say the stock are a lot more fun. Now, I handbrake it here as well. I left it in, but let me know what, like... If I drift sideways on an icy road, I don't think I've ever rolled it in the chain. But when I test it now and put the handbrake on... I skid until my front wheels, I think, hit the snow and then it digs in and flips. But I believe if I didn't clip the snow, I would have just drifted. And that's where, like, again, those stock tyres are brilliant, but they're almost a bit too brilliant sometimes. And it's they're even more brilliant on tarmac. <laughs> like, you go sideways in this and you're probably rolling. Uh, this 
test. To be honest, when I was on my playthrough, going back and forth through here about five times, the Hummer kept getting stuck. And I was just like, I'm bored of doing this, I'm just going to drive the Navistar everywhere, I'll just take a fuel trailer, like I'll stick a little uh, scout fuel trailer on the back of the Navistar with a crane. <laughs> it doesn't even know, it's just like, crack on. But, yeah, I, I, I only left it in because one, I'm going to try some of the other scouts across here. And essentially, this is what you end up doing with scouts, is like, that trailer's in the way. And I will, I might move, I might leave it for the scout, I don't know. But anyway, this is what you do with scouts, you winch to everything, it's got great winch reach, so you don't necessarily have to go through heavy off-roading areas. Here I'm kind of screwed either way, because there's deep snow either side, and this thing doesn't like deep snow. It took me about 10 minutes to get from there to here, which is about a 30 second journey in a Taiga. Um, yeah, I wouldn't bring it on snow maps, if I'm honest. Unless you're just bombing, like, from Northport Garage to the port, That'd be a great drive. I would take this over, like, the Taiga and that, because it's pure roads, and I'd put the stocks on and go drifting. Um, through here, you can see, obviously, it's got its moments where it has a bit of burst of speed. I was trying all different gears. Auto, like, I could... It, this is low-range diffs on. It's just, yeah, I'd rather chance it and have a chance of going faster, basically. But uh, the... what they called on this one? The SnowRunner gearbox would definitely be like if you go in a bit more like light to medium off-road probably not a bad option again I'm not going to go all the way through here but I did want to see that's typical like not a load of damage but it does it is a bit delicate sometimes like that see I get to here and I'm like nope it'd take me now about an hour probably or 30 minutes to an hour to get to the rock bridge I just wouldn't do it this is what I'd do <laughs> I was just about to go past here like Slam the hanny on. I've got a wool jump in test to accomplish. So, we'll line her up. I was like, go on, please do it. Ah, oh, you beast. I mean, them boxes. They Mexican wave every goddamn time. <laughs> of course, I don't. I don't. I don't give up on the first try. You never know. Oh yes, right now I was like, I don't, it's the most pointless, irrelevant test yet. This alone, it's a keeper. <laughs> For me, it's like, I've got three of them, and I'll keep them now, just because they can jump that wall. <laughs> just because they can jump that wall 50% of the time. Like, there might be a watchtower over there that I need to jump at immediately. I pull in it through with the uh, dolphin, but it's... Yeah, I had a quick go just because if I didn't show you... I myself would be like, yeah, you should have put it in. You should have left a bit of footage of it going through that shitty mud. It took me about two minutes just to get back to here. I drove five foot forward at a very slow speed and then clipped my nose on that. I was like, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> Dolphin, grab me. So going up here, there's I'm in low range with the diffs on, but this is where like I prefer that punchiness. You see now I beached myself. I didn't know for a second, but I was like, aha, that's the problem. So, I can't drive off it even now when I'm in auto. I reverse off. Go back up the same bit in auto. Again, diffs off, so it's sort of pick your poison, really. Do you want to lose revs or diffs? But, sort of equal spot or whatever. On In auto, it managed to pull itself. It had just a bit more speed to shove itself over that. I'm not saying it gripped better over there. It just punched its way better over there. Uh, climbing up here, to be honest, not bad though. That's why I was like, I didn't want to do that mud test because it's kind of stupid and pointless. Like, you wouldn't ever want to. A scout is small and narrow enough that you could skip around the left of that mud without. You could wiggle through the trees. So, obstacles like that are just never going to be, unless it's for your own fun and enjoyment. It's You won't rarely need to do it anyway in a scout. And the nice thing with a scout is the scout reach. So, you can just grab stuff. I'll, uh, I'll show you a bit more of that. A bit later, I rolled it there. It's not bad for landing back on its wheels. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. You'll see. It's like there, the suspension was squidgy enough that it just carried on. But then now, it has still got enough to catch itself. The suspension is a tiny bit bouncy in this. I've got to be honest. There, are, there is in a lot of scouts, but it just, yeah, it is. I'm sure with not raised suspension, it'd be. 
less bouncy, but it just it, that's then for you guys to test out if you know what I mean. This is just like fully upgrade everything, so it's theoretically well, it's the best upgrades. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the best handling. Another roll there, it did land on its wheels. That's what I mean. I wouldn't say it's the best. Like the loaf is hands down the best for landing back on its wheels, but this ain't bad. Like, and it makes a difference. Imagine if I landed on my roof there. I mean, I have got an Azov down the road, but that's why I arrive in pairs usually now. Because if I rolled then, when I was making the older videos a few weeks ago, I'd now recover to the garage, have to drive back, and it used to eat so much time. That's the nice thing with a winch. You can jump so like it's like the thing in that film, the thing <laughs> where it shoots tentacles out and grabs the dogs. So like you just launch the winch at loads of stuff that's really far away. Like a truck winch won't reach far. A scout winch, even if you get up to an obstacle like that devil's mud bit, it's like you can reach a tree that's pretty damn far away and just pull yourself through at the speed of the winch. Up here, this is where you see it's got chained on, but it just scouts don't really have the weight to take advantage as much. Obviously, you know my favourite vehicle's a loaf, and I've got muds on that. So again, I'm not anti-muds, my favourite vehicle's wearing muds. It's sort of similar with a Kolob in a way. When I crabbed over here, this angle is a tiny bit better and there's a bit of snow to actually bite into. This is in low rain. You... Can you just hear the difference in, like, it's nothing against the low range, but just with this vehicle in particular, it's just not quite at that sweet spot rev range. But it's comfortable at low, like it will go up on that, it's just, yeah. I tend to find myself, like I say, sort of pick your poison, do you want revs or diffs? And I... If I want diffs, I'll pick, I'll just pick a scout that's got diffs always on, if you know what I mean, where... Um, yeah, having revs is, like, nice. And in the end, I got here, it tipped over. One thing I will just say as well, I don't like since the update, it must be a bug. I can't move my tyres now, and I don't like that. It, a lot of the time, it probably won't even help, but the fact that I can't jiggle them now, I don't like. I'm not that bothered on this, but it keeps doing my head in when I can't do it in the loaf, because the loaf can just flick itself back up from all kinds of angles, but since the steering just can't be moved, that's like an option down, and again, you see I'm in the middle of a mountain in the middle of nowhere, that would have cost me a lot of game time if I didn't have an ease of down the road course the loaf makes it into every vi uh, video. The reason I'm showing this though is obviously this is the two slot trailer. What I don't like is the winch points are on the back corners of the trailer and as you can see it's basically towing something like off centre. The best thing you can do if the vehicle you're towing to has got off centre winch points is like put them both over to the left or right depending on which way you're looking at it and yeah you can see it sort of more falls back in line and it's uh, not sitting wide going through it, I released the low for a second because I just wanted to know what this was like over here. I honestly, like, light off-roading and paved roads, this is definitely a lot of fun and grassy hills and all that. It really doesn't like mud and snow, I don't think. There's definitely better scouts for mud and snow. I mean, <clears throat> buy yourself a loaf. Whoa, something stuck in my throat there. Not a loaf though, because that would have got out of my throat. I took a shortcut because look at it, I was like, hell no, <laughs> am I driving through that? This review wouldn't be out until next week if I did. So, again, though, that's a nice thing with the scouts, the nice little things, you can take shortcuts. Here, I'm feeding the steering in to the left. There, I purposely swerved right. The, re the thing I wanted to say is, because I'm on a PS4 remote, I don't really steer, like, 20%, I'm just, like, 100% off, 100% off, 100% off. So, I'm flicking it on and off and on and off. Since the update, that the wheels flick back to the centre quicker, whereas I used to be feeding a bit more steering each time, now I'm just kind of, by the time I've let go of the stick and pushed it back on, I'm back to the centre, so when I was trying to slowly steer left down there, it wasn't having a lot, but then if you hold the stick on, this is kind of one of those, not much, not much, not much, wham, and it just suddenly, the full steering effects kick in. So just bear it in mind. Over here, I was pretty impressed, to be honest. It's crawling over them rocks, like, considering it's a scout and it's towing a trailer. I was pretty impressed with that. Rock crawling, that sort of thing, this may well be uh, pretty good at. See, the winch again, it's just like, well, bang. <laughs> like the thing, just grab whatever's 
like a truck wouldn't have reached that nowhere near. You can see as soon as that concrete again I'm gonna fine tune these tests based on how I feel like how the first couple of scouts react to it but again just in case we need to set a benchmark I tried both like diffs on an auto what I can say though if you look now you can definitely tell that there's more power being fed to the rear than the front and that could possibly be just be because of revs because when I put it in auto it now looks more even I still think there's a tad more to the rear but it definitely balanced out a bit more in low range it really was noticeable basically it's like you're bordering on is it even four wheel drive or is it now just the backs doing a lot of the effort which you can tell when you drive it is really or it's doing more it's definitely like 70 30 to the rear because you drift when you go along the road which I like I'm, so I'm not necessarily knocking but that's probably not the best power distribution choice uh, going up here by the way I just removed the cargo so that cargo is now I believe weightless if it's not weightless it must be like 10% of what it actually weighs but I do believe it is weightless so again I'll see how the other vehicles react but there's gonna be some kind of similar test to this anyway because I know you wouldn't really be towing cargo I just want to standardize weight and I don't want to keep bringing vehicles and then I've got to drain the fuel on them and all that and it's like this is just a standard trailer it's attached to me I've still got my winch it's got some weight on it I can repeat that weight so yeah it was just like and it did get up here to be honest pulling it as again I will say that concrete slab is either weightless or mostly weightless I did use the winch again as well on the telegraph pole so I've got rid of the trailer for now because really you're not going to be doing too much of that you're going to be doing this sort of stuff see I can drive down the right hand side of this road I don't have to always chew through the mud admittedly up here it narrows in and it's like I've not got much choice but then that's where you know low range stiffs on will get you by for the little awkward bits and yeah progress is going to be slow if you got some serious off-roading to be done I wouldn't take this I would honestly take the loaf over this for off-roading you just seen that little bit in Zimnigorsk like the loaf's pretty deep they've upped the speed of the loaf a bit and it like it's yeah the loaf's a beast man <laughs> buy a loaf um yeah this thing climbed up here though and this I left it in because this is the road in Zimnigorsk where you start heading towards like where you'd get the Tatarin this road would be a nightmare but again that's the thing with scouts you sort of skip down the edges and even little things like that I can squeeze through that gap and then even though it's pretty damn boggy down there I got to this water quicker than most trucks would quicker than the Tatarin to get down here because I was able to just nail it down the side I have to say, oh, this is why I left this in in the end. I was pretty impressed. I honestly didn't think it would make it through here. The current is shoving me sideways, which is possibly helping me a bit. However, I, I, I will just say, I think if I went back the other way, it would be more awkward because of the way the current bends round. Even with the Dan, I was able to get through this way, not on the way back. But... As I showed you there, you launch the winch out. Like, the winch could reach that tree from the other side of the river. A truck couldn't. A truck would have to at least probably make it to, like, a third to a halfway in the river. So, that's the advantages of scouts, is the winch. And that's a big reason, like, why the loaf. I love the loaf, because I can just... I've got so many more options with double the winch length and a monster winch. I assume these are all the same strength winch, but I've never had to find out, because the loaf's a beef see those trees it was ripping out they're a bit pointless now because it's like don't even offer it me if it's just gonna pop out instantly but before the update the loaf was the only one that could grab all them little trees and it wouldn't break them every other scout would and again that was just little things the loaf creeps into your life and at first you're like nah, it's an 11 grand truck I'll take something else <laughs> and then something else fails and you end up bringing a loaf See, again, look at the distance with that. And I knew, like, this. I left this bit in because look how slow it was across that snow. And I've done this shortcut hundreds of times. This is the airport, so, like, I've even in the Hummer, I've gone over there loads. Uh, yeah, nice thing, again, because the Hummer's more rear-wheel happy. It gets a little bit of drift with the chained. The chained are the worst tyres for drifting. Ergo, uh, <laughs> they're probably the safest if you're busy and you're doing something and you want to get there. Like, they don't let you drift that much. They do a little bit, but it's... Yeah, it's sort of controlled drifting. On my M5, to be honest, you had traction on. 
M mode traction where it'd let you get the arse end out but it'd still limit it a bit or just traction off and it was like M mode was great fun because it was just lazy drifting. Um, jumped off the cliff, it didn't glitch or anything that time. Uh, this is what I would do. <laughs> I was like, I ain't driving that thing over here again. Like, get yourself like tattering or yeah, an Azov of and just drag the thing over. No problem. 15 mile an hour. How's a plane gonna take off at 15 mile an hour? What a stupid sign. That's health and safety wombles that is. Trying to wreck everything. Fucking Julie 46 from Chelmsford, you selfish bitch. What if I want to go up the wrong ladder and hurt my neck so I can go home early? She didn't think about any of us, did she? And she's posing with a no win, no fee check. Now, everywhere has got the right bloody ladder. I'd, back in my day, there was people who could get up ladders and there was idiots. And it was just more exciting in the 90s. Like, when I was a kid, I was at some swimming class at school. And they're, well, they're trying to teach us breaststroke, like the shittest swimming method ever. Has anyone ever in the history of drowning gone, I know, breaststroke? Like, it's so crap that they had to name it breaststroke, like, to convince me to get there. I mean, when someone said, yeah, strip to your pants, we're going to learn breaststroke, I was like, wha bang, like Bruce Almighty undressing. And then I got there and it's like, what the hell is this? Just a shitter way of swimming? Like, why would you teach me this? But. Yeah, like basically, I started swimming out, and I was like, "Yeah, I don't. This is I don't like this. This is crap." <laughs> started turning around in the swimming pool. The teacher suddenly screams because she thought I was drowning, which I really wasn't. I was trying to turn around. I was drowning in a minute. She panicked. Threw, you know the brick that you throw in the swimming pool that you're supposed to dive down and get. She threw that in for me. Like, whose only purpose in life is to sink in a swimming pool? And then the lifeguard, I've obviously been watching Baywatch for about five years and had never rescued anyone at this point, so he come hurtling down the fucking ledge, jumped and landed on me, which punched me underwater, which then I really was like, this is not good. Like, I'm not going to say oh, I was a bloody dolphin in the water, like, I was, I swam out and I was like, yeah, I don't like this, this breaststroke is just ridiculous, and uh, there's only one type of breaststroke I'm doing from now on, put it that way. Yeah, swimming ain't my strong suit. So like, like pushing that bloody car, letting the policewoman do it. Like, fucking hell, where's she when, I, when I'm swimming? But um, anyway, I suppose it should get back to the test. It drove in the water, and that's how deep it can go. There's a snorkel. I was going a bit deeper now, as you do. That's what she said. But then, uh, yeah, I remembered. I was like, oh, I want a brand new engine. Now, slight distraction, obviously. Look at my camera flick around. I was like, god damn, I can hit it. This is for science, obviously. I didn't want to do this, but <laughs> didn't even let it finish landing. Like, god damn it, recover. Now at this point, I was getting a bit sick and tired of landing to the right of it. Azov landed like a professional. I winched it over basically to the right. I was like, oh my god, you prick tease. So close, just gonna clip it, just to wind me up that it took eight damage and it's possible. And it didn't clip through, and then it's oh my god, game! I'm I'm more stubborn than you. Oh yes, yes. See, that's a relevant test. Like, I mean, this Azov, it loves flying around. Look at it, like a slippery little dolphin off them cliffs. And yeah, if you're driving along and a slippery dolphin comes flying out the sky, like to be honest, the Hummer. It was, I was having so much fun, I recovered the A's up and was like, oh yeah, shit, I was supposed to repair the Hummer. Look at it. One owner from new. Mint. So we're going to go back in for a drowning test. I'll say now, this Hummer isn't that great in water. Water up to your bonnet, you'll be good. Like, it doesn't punch through it that fast. Obviously, I'm in low range diffs on which the revs are capped. But you'll basically see now, it's twisting to the uh, right. It's basically floating on one side, so yeah, half, like the right side of my vehicle's tilting up. I do find it interesting. I usually find this. It's always, usually, not the driver's side. Not always, but I just I've noticed it on some. So I don't know if the driver adds weight. It'd be quite cool if it does. But anyway, that's basically my conclusion so far for this. I'm glad I gave it another chance. I'm glad, thanks to Coca-Cola again for telling me about the roof rack thing because he just basically saved four or five scouts from living in my garage forever. Um, yeah, I own three of these for slightly different reasons. Obviously, some of you will know the Hummer update flying around. It isn't good 
off-road, paved road and like solid dirt roads, yeah. But if you want to go off-roading, get a Tega. I mean, look, they're even the same colour. The Tega's like a gigantic six-wheel pickup version of the Hummer. <laughs> but they both had the, like, say, if I was going to go from, say, Northport Garage to the port, and that's all roads, I would actually take the Hummer probably because it drifts. It's just, it's fun to mess around on the roads. Obviously, you want to go some serious off-roading, you got to pay the money for it, and you got to go and get the bigger stuff. Uh, considering you find this for free, I will do a uh, location and upgrade video. The only reason I didn't is because just, I mean, I am pushing it a bit, but I just about had time to, like, plan out what I'm going to do for scout tests and do this. Obviously, because of insomnia migraines and that, if I have a bad night where I've got a bit of a short time, I can uh, do something like the... Hummer upgrade, so yeah, but if you want to know where it is, if you look in my truck reviews where I go over the rock bridge in Northport, it's basically right there where I get off the rock bridge, it's there, so it's not even that far uh, from, if you, where you're from the garage, follow the pipeline to the water where the drilling site is, and yeah, you can't miss it, it's pretty early, pretty easy to get, and uh, yeah, it's worth grabbing, definitely worth grabbing, it's about 50 grand fully upgraded, and it's, I think it's 16 or 18 grand, but obviously you find uh, one, so you shouldn't have to pay for at least one. Anyway, like I say, I've got three because they are, uh, there is a glitch with them. And I will say this, like, I've never had it happen anywhere else except diving off the mat, uh, that cliff you just seen me jump off. So this is pretty much the end of the video. That's my review. The stock tyres are definitely worth a look at if you've not given them a good old test because they're definitely better than your average stock tyres. Like I say, just it was only because of the extra three inches that these tyres won, but it was close. Um, yeah, as for a Hummer update, I flew off here. I, this is a different Hummer to the one I've just tested. They're all fully upgraded, but yeah. There, like, <laughs> I was like, what the hell? That's never done that to me in this or any other Scout or truck or anything. I, uh, I've bottomed out a bit there and took damage like that but I've never just stopped dead. I landed this time and, well, yeah. You know, like when someone's moved your seat in the car and you just, you know something's not right. To be honest, every now and then you can't really choose which direction, but it does travel pretty fast when it wants to. And in a second coming out, I don't even know a lot about epilepsy, but just that epilepsy warning, because I haven't even got epilepsy and even my brain was like, I don't like it, <laughs> turn it off. Angry sea worms got me. That must be where it lives. It does not like me ramming hummers into it. And yeah, well, I mean, again, I, as usual, came prepared. I was cooking my dinner, so I'll ride it out. See? Time of its bloody life. So was I as well listening to that song, Scatman. That brings back some memories. But yeah, it, it's definitely still bugged. Not all the time, and I've only ever found it on this cliff, so it's not a problem. It's never been for me driving around. Anyway, came back with this. I mean, look at it like the climactic scene from Free Willy and who wouldn't want a Free Willy climax I tried to attach the winch and rip it out of the cliff but I couldn't reach it I don't think this Azov quite understands the meaning of damage suspension because it's a tough old beast to kill in the first place but as you can see no engine, no gearbox damage but yeah even when you do damage the suspension it doesn't really care less I was looking there like oh no I do like my little stance nation corner I've got my Tegra and my lowered Hummer but yeah, I don't know if I can afford 120 grand lowered Azov. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon.